Oh, I must tell Mossop and Tiddler. Oh, no! Come back! Come! Oh! Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, oh! That's something you don't see every day. A letter without a hedgehog attached to it. Pardon, my sir? Well, I ask you, Tiddler, how do we normally get our letters delivered, eh? eh? Well, I'll tell you. Posty brings them, that's how. Ah! But how does he carry them, hmm? 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 Yeah, Well, I'll tell you. He sticks them on his hedgehoggy spines, that's how. But how does he get them down to us, eh? Hmm? Well, aren't you going to answer? I didn't think I'd get a chance to, Mussop. You haven't let me get a word in so far. Nonsense. I'll tell you how he gets them to us, Tiddler. He brings them down. He doesn't just drop them in and hope for the best. Mm. Hey, getting idle in your old age, are you, Posty? Hey? hey? Doesn't look as though anybody's going to give me any answers today. <sighs> now then. Mm. What does it say? Hey? Oh, it says, uh, Dear Madam. <laughs> Can't even get my name right. <sighs> Dear Madam, I am pleased to inform you that your spring water has passed all the tests laid down by law. Oh, that, what's that supposed to mean, for goodness sake? Yeah. Moss up, Tiddler, are you down there? Moss up, Tiddler? Oh, you want to be careful you don't fall down that well, Miss Dor. Oh, hello, Mr Grimley, I do want to be careful. I've already lost something down there. Yeah. Oh, hello, you two. Oh, thank you. Goodness, you found it. Found what, Marjorie? My letter. Uh, oh, so it's yours, is it? Ha <laughs> ha, that explains a lot. I wondered who was writing to me about my spring and why they kept on getting my name wrong to boot. Spring? You mean spring water? Is that a letter about the water that you're going to bottle and sell, Miss Dor? Yes, it's passed all the tests. Hooray! <laughs> That's wonderful news, Marjorie. Yes, and if I make enough money... I won't have to sell Riddleton End. And that's the best news of all. Mm. Three cheers for Riddleton End spring water. <laughs> hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hey, tiddler, tiddler. I said three, not five. <laughs> Sorry, Mossop. Mm. I got a bit carried away. Oh, this is so exciting. Now, I'd better go and telephone Mr... Mr Arkwright. And then I think we'll all have a celebration lunch, shall we? I've only got cold meats and salad, I'm afraid. Will that do? Oh, that'd be lovely, Marjorie. Um, is there anything I can do to help? Oh, well, you could wash the salad stuff, if you don't mind. It's all in the shopping basket. Just leave it to me, Marjorie. Well, that'll be a great help. Oh. Thanks. Now, I'll just pop down the telephone box and I'll see you later. <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah. To think all this water down here is worth a lot of money. Mm. <laughs> Well, it will be worth a lot of money if people don't drop things into it and spoil it. Oh, well, of course. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hey, do you know what? I think Marjorie could do with a sort of roof over it to stop things from dropping into the water. Hey, that's a good idea, that is, Mossop. I know. Why don't we build a roof over it? I've got plenty of wood in my garden and I'm very good at building things. And you're in good company, Mr Grimley, for I am a dab hand at the building line, as well you know. Then what are we waiting for? Come on, then. Right. Uh, oh, it's very stiff. How can I wash the salad stuff if I can't turn the tap on? Oh. I know. That's it, Mossop. Uh, Just bang a few nails into that. Uh, right you are, Mr Grimley. What is going on up there? Drat! Yeah. Oh. Ah, now... Oh, hello, Tiddler. Fancy seeing you down here. Uh, have you seen anything of a hammer? Yes, I have. It only just missed my head. Huh? It fed in the water. Ah! Better fish it out, then. Mm -hmm. Look out below! Mm -hmm. Oh, ah, yeah. That was a close thing. What are you doing up there? Uh, we're just putting a roof on the top of the well, Tiddler, <laughs> to stop things dropping in the water and spoiling it. It's a pity there isn't a roof over it already, to stop all your things from falling down. Mm. I'm going back to the house. Careful of your thumb, Mr Grimley. What? Oh. Oh. I told you to be careful. You can't say as how I didn't. But it's you that made me do it, creeping up on me like that. Oh, my thumb. 
You'd better let me do the hammering for a bit. I'm not so clumsy as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it who dropped the hammer down the well, then? Eh, we'll oh. soon have it finished at this rate, though, won't we, eh? eh? Yeah, and, you know, I'll be quite sorry when it's finished. I'm really enjoying myself. I know what you mean. Soaring up wood, it feels so good. It's so satisfying. Down to and fro, just like so. See the sword us flying. Ain't it grand working, working with, with your hands? You just can't beat the feeling. And the pleasure doesn't fade when you know that you have made something useful and appealing. Here, here's something useful and appealing I've made for you, Mr. Grimley. What's this then? My pleasure. Oh, a nail and hammer is a little short on glamour, but it's still such a great sensation. Bashing nails with all your might and sticking planks together tightly as you toil at your creation. Oh, ain't it grand working, working with, with your hands? You just can't beat the feeling. And the pleasure doesn't fade when you know that you have made something useful and appealing. Ah, useful and appealing, eh? That's what it is, all right. No mistake. Hey, that it is. It certainly is, but, um... Would you say it was up straight, Mossop? Uh, yes, perfectly fine to me, Mr Grimley. Perfectly straight, that is. But look how far you're leaning over. Try standing up straight. Oh. Oh. Yeah, maybe you're right, Mr Grimley. It could be straighter, and that's a fact... Uh, Shall we take it apart and start again, eh? There's no need for that. Look, if I tie this to here and tie this over to this tree, now that should pull it up straight. Excellent idea, Mr Grimley. Just what I was going to suggest myself, that is. <laughs> Easy when you know what you're doing, isn't it? What's that for, Mr Grimley? Oh, it's just a little trick that we builders use every now and then. Right, how does it... how does it look now, then? It looks awful. Quiet, Tiddler. What do you know about building? <laughs> um... You know, Mr Grumley, I think it might be leaning a tinsy-winchy bit the other way now. Oh, just what I'm thinking myself. But we can soon fix that. There. <sighs> If I tie this to the gate... Oh, dear! Uh, careful, Marjorie. Oh. Don't spoil our handiwork. Sorry about that, Miss Dore. No harm done. What, uh, what exactly is it? Oh, it's to stop things falling down the well and making your spring water all dirty. But, Mossop, I won't be getting the water from down the well. I'll be getting the water from the source of the spring, and that's way up at the other end of the garden. Ah. Oh, uh, well, it'll still be useful. Um, it'll stop things falling down the well and making Tiddler and I dirty. <laughs> but anyway, it's very decorative, isn't it? But it's not straight. It's leaning over. Hmm. So it is. Hmm. I think we're going to have to stop and think about this before we try and straighten it again. A ah, very good idea, Mr Grumley. In fact, we could have an Aesop break, why not? An Aesop break? Yes. A bit of a rest while we listen to some words of wisdom from Aesop's foibles. A vital part of Tiddler's training are Aesop's foibles. Oh, those are the things you get from those riddle stones, aren't they? No, I had one of those I found in my garden. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh, would you like to oblige, Marjorie? Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> listen very carefully, Tiddler. See if you can spot the moral in this story. Ease up, ease up. Tell us a story, do. Long ago, in the days of dragons, there lived a tribe of riddlers who had a problem. And since the problem happened to be a dragon, it was a very big problem indeed. Now, some dragons are noble. Some are ferocious. But this particular dragon was sneaky. And that is the very worst kind of dragon there is. Her great delight was to creep up on Riddlers when their backs were turned and shout, Boo! which made them jump. And what made them jump even more were the flames which shot out of her mouth each time she shouted. 
Every riddler in that tribe had either singed trousers or scorched skirts. And there were more burned bottoms around than you could count. And what was even worse, sometimes the dragon wouldn't shout boo at all. Sometimes she'd just sneak up on a riddler and drag him away to her lair. And that riddler would never be seen again. Something must be done about that there dragon, said the chief riddler. And everybody agreed that he was right. So the riddlers all met together to think of a plan. They thought and they thought, till the veins stood out on their foreheads and their hair curled. But nobody could think of what to do. Then up spoke a tiddler. Here, I got it, he said. What we must do is fix a bell round that dragon's neck. Then, when she tries to sneak up on us, we'll hear the bell ringing and we can run off. Brilliant, said one. A perfect plan, said another. Oh, give that tiddler a lollipop, said a third. The riddlers at the meeting thought that this was the cleverest scheme they'd ever heard. All apart from one old riddler who sat in the corner sucking his teeth. What I'd like to know, he said, is who's going to put the bell around that dragon's neck, eh? And at that, there was total silence. Everybody sat around, looking at everybody else. And then, in ones and twos, they began to drift away from the meeting, feeling very silly and very sore them sitting too long on their burned bottoms. Right there, Tiddler. What do you make of that, then? What's the lesson old Aesop was trying to teach us in that story? Hmm? Oh, that's easy, Mossop. The more it is, it's easy to talk about doing something, but actually doing it is a lot harder. Correct. Oh, that's very clever of you, Dan Tiddler. Can't have been that easy to work out the model. Oh, yes, it was, Mr. Grimley. I only had to look at this thing you and Mossop have built to get the answer. What do you mean? Well, it must have been easy for the two of you to talk about building a roof over the well, but actually building it is quite a different thing, isn't it? I beg your pardon, Tiddler. Are you trying to say that that there roof isn't all it should be? I resent that, I do. And so do I. There's nothing wrong with that roof. <laughs> nothing at all. Well... Look, I know you two have worked very hard, and I'm really very grateful. But I agree with Tiddler. I mean, it doesn't look very safe, does it? Well, it's just a bit lopsided, that's all, and me and Mossop can soon put that right. That we can, Mr Grimley, that we can. Now, I think if I just tie this up to the greenhouse... Oh, my goodness! <laughs> 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 Well, at least it's not lopsided anymore, is it? Uh, true enough, Mr Grimley. True enough. Well, well done, you two. Hmm. Do, 